Well, when I look at these standings here, we're one point away, Ohio State, and one bad match away from being 6 and 0. So it could be good and uh, it, it could be worse. But uh, this conference is tough, and our team's got to figure out how to bring it every night. That's our big challenge right now. It doesn't get any easier this week. Two more ranked teams, and then uh, two more ranked teams next week. So uh, it's got, got some good, good challenges in front of us. Well, it dep depends on the night. We played great Friday night. I mean, we did everything great, and then we did nothing well yesterday. So that's the frustration with this group is uh, their, their inconsistency. But, you know, uh, you got to expect that or, or at least be prepared for that in this conf conference with the competition we're playing and then um, with, uh, I think, the youth of our team and inexperience. Well, I don't think we passed a ball to Mary in the, in the, to the setter target until about halfway through the first game. So that was one big concern. And then two, we didn't follow the game plan at all. So, uh, but we were just out of out of whack and couldn't couldn't uh, follow the game plan. And Michigan fed off of it, and got hot, and and then uh, you know if we win game two, maybe it changes. But uh, you know we lost a. I don't know what, I remember what the score was, 30-28 or something like that. We lost that game. Had several chances to win it. Couldn't do it. But you got to give credit to Michigan there at home, and they took advantage of it and played really well. And we just couldn't match it. I heard you say that you wanted to attack more behind the setter. I mean, is it, was the passing problems what led to going away from that game plan? Or is there any other well, you've got to be able to pass to do that. So that's the, the problem. And so our passing and ball control wasn't very good, and, and uh, Michigan's was, and they, they got it to their stud hitter a lot, and she's hard to stop. And we didn't do a very good job of executing our game plan to stop her, so it was a combination of both. What was your game plan on pole? Well, you, you have to take away her best shot, and we didn't take it away. And we trained for it, we practiced for it, and uh, we prepared for it, we watched video on it, and they for whatever reason, our players didn't do it. How many, uh, how many kills and what kind of percentage do you need for the middles to consistently have success in matches? Middles should be hitting, and we'd like at least two kills a game over, over about 325 or higher. That's what a good middle should do. Because middles are typically only getting set when you pass the ball well. But, you know, Meg still had a pretty good night offensively, and, and uh, uh, but her, you know, she didn't block any balls and got chewed up by Cole. So, you know, she has to get a lot of kills to match that. And, uh, you know, and again, but Friday night against Michigan State, which is we've never played well there, we played really well. And uh, really, you know, I thought had one of our best matches of the year. Have you got some examples from other teams this year of what quality middle and how they can impact the match? What, what do you mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and again, if you pass the ball and get him the, the ball, uh, but we, you know, we were putting two blockers on her, but still weren't lined up right and weren't executing. And um, <clears throat> so we we probably made her better than she, but you know she took advantage of it, and we didn't we didn't do anything. Be like in football, if somebody's running the ball up the middle, you better stop it, or it's going to be a long night. You know, we let her run up the middle and didn't stop her. And that, that was frustrating. What factors determined how you uh, play your middles in the lineup this weekend? Like, here we played Friday, Melanie came and started Sunday. What went into that? Um, it was what we thought we need more offense from Kira or more blocking from Melanie. And um, so it was uh, kind of the matchup situation. And, uh, and then we're, what middle blocker spot we want to make at. So, I mean, it depends on who's in. Make can play both spots, so it just depended on that. But we knew we needed to be bigger against Michigan because they have two big middles. Where Michigan State, uh, we felt like we needed to have more offense with Kira, so that's what we went with. Hey John, uh, I want to ask you about uh, you've got three former players on Team USA that won the World Championship yesterday. Yes. How big an impact is that? 
it's the first time they've won that. Well, it's historic for USA Volleyball, and uh, they've never done very well in the World Championships. Uh, so it's historic, and you know the the this we're two years out from the Olympics, so this is the mid cycle of the quadrennium of well, who's the best in the world, and you know it's like winning an NBA championship or a Super Bowl championship. I mean, it's all the best countries over. I mean, I don't know how many matches they played. It was over like three weeks in Italy. And to come out on top is, is, is historic. And to have three Nebraska girls on there is, uh, I'm not even sure that's sunk in yet. But, but the problem is nobody hears about it and knows about it because it's happening in Italy. And you know, um, you know I get a text last night that they won. So it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not mainstream public here, but it's a huge accomplishment and it gives them great confidence now and hope they'll be ranked number one in the world and going into the Olympics, which will be in Brazil, which will be tough, but it's, those guys are going to have a ton of confidence coming off of that. You've got three players. I mean, that's yeah, it's three out of 12 on that team. Yeah, what's that, what's that feel like to have yeah. four former players on the national team? Yeah, well, it's, it's uh, I just, you know, we try to be the best in everything that we do and prepare these girls to go on to be in those situations and for them to have success. And I know how hard those guys work and how much they care about it. Uh, uh, it's, I mean, it's a great reflection on Nebraska, our program, the support we have here. And um, that, you know, you look at Kayla's from Dubuque, Iowa, Jordan's from Hooper, Nebraska, Kelsey's from Chicago, but the, the, you know, small town girls can get it done. That's pretty cool. But to be a world champion in any sport is, I mean, it's hard to even fathom what it feels like. How did you feel your blocking did yesterday? I mean, not just on cold, but on. It was, our blocking was very poor. And a lot of times when you go on the road, um, your blocking is going to suffer a little bit, whether you're fatigued or just a different gym. and. Maybe you're not quite as dialed in or amped up, and so uh, our blocking was not very good yesterday. We couldn't, we really didn't stop anybody, which is disappointing because that's usually a strength of ours. When you look at the numbers that, that no girl had, the five-year-old kid, was that surprising to you? Um, yeah, yeah, but she's pretty good, so don't, don't discount her size. And um, you know, Dan Mill's a great setter, and she gets her in great spots for her to be successful. And again, we, we didn't follow our game plan on her, and it was a, it was a, it was a bad day for us in regards to a having a great team effort and trusting our game plan. So we got to learn from that. John, what do you think about the week ahead with these two opponents coming back here that weekend? Well, well you got to win at home. So uh, as Al Davis used to say, just win, baby. We got to find a way now to rally back. You know, we keep having these great matches to build on and then we have matches that we, we have to learn from and these guys have got to continue to grow up each week and figure out what they have to do to be successful every night but you know we're going to play four ranked teams in a row now so uh, we, we have got to take it up another notch. Hey John, which is the worst part of this weekend, uh, losing or missing the Philadelphia? Well the Friday night was definitely worth missing Pearl Jam for, because uh, I'm telling you, we going to Michigan State is always an adventure. Uh, of course, yesterday took a little luster off that, but uh, um, you know, but I, I think you know, it's uh, you know, it it hurt m missing Pearl Jam, but it, it was worth it Friday night. So, <laughs> tons, <laughs> tons. My my phone was on fire, but I got video updates and um, you know I, I had backstage passes. So my my son actually went in my place and you know he's hanging out with Mike McCready and Matt Cameron and he's got pictures with him and the whole thing's pretty cool. So so hopefully there'll be another chance I can hook up with those guys. But I, I I'm in with them. So if there's ever a concert I can get to, I can relive all that so I'll, I'll, I'll hope for that <laughs> no, I was happy for him because it's it's you know everybody I mean I was getting texts from everybody who said it was a great concert and 
that's what I, I, I like to use them as an example in teaching. They're a great team. They've been together for a long time. They have, I think they just, uh, they play great music and they put on a great show. I and mean, there's no, there's no, they're not dropping out of the ceiling and doing all that stuff. It's just great music and they connect with the fans and, you know, Eddie Vedder is a great, great, uh, you know, performer, and he has a great way of connecting. So that's that's what I like about those guys. All right. All right. Thanks.